Pacers, it's Peps again, and for today's season preview, we are discussing the Richmond Football Club. The great thing is, is that I've got Nick from Tiger Talk, Richmond's sensational podcast, here today to talk about Richmond, what's going on in 2021, and can they go three out of four, or will they get coxed out of the finals again? Nick, welcome to Lace Out. Oh, Peps. Look, I was really excited to be on the show until you, you brought back perhaps the the only just truly traumatising memory of the past four years of that preliminary final. It's actually uh, on our show it's pretty much forbidden to to bring up that game. Like what are, what are the odds that, you know, you take a random super tall dude and he doesn't know how to play football and he only plays one good game in his, in his entire life and it's against us in the preliminary final. What are the odds? Oh, it, you couldn't back it. I was actually at that game, and I have never seen a bunch of even non-supporters just looking around, going, "What is going on?" Because he hasn't played a good game yeah. since. Let's let's be frank. And you had that on toast, and you literally got outcoxed. And I, I just, it's disappointing to say because. You should have been there the week later and taken that one out as well. So, but you know what? That's the past, and you really haven't done much since then. Two flags. Yep. <laughs> so I wouldn't be complaining. It's funny. I think Richmond, in your case, uh, premierships are the new ninth for you guys. Oh, look! It the the change in in personality, and look, I can I can only hope that everyone gets the the chance to. You know, for for yourself, um, you know, it's been a, an extremely long time between drinks. But you know, 2017, we'd had two finals wins in 35 years. You know, as you said, we were more f- famous for finishing ninth than actually being good. We came into the year end of 2016. We finished 2016 round 23, 113 point loss to the Swans. Um, absolute. Abject performance, and yet we've got fourteen uh, future premiership players out on the park that day. Like it's, like it's a. If there's a message of hope, it's that just sometimes you just never know footy, and you know you you make a few changes, you change the game plan, you get, you put round pegs in round holes, uh, and yeah, it can, it can come together. I mean, often it doesn't, but occasionally it does. It's pretty awesome. And if you go back to that time, Dimmer's head was on the chopping block. Like there was people oh. wanting to, to, you know, slice him. There was the the people for Richmond or take over Richmond or whatever that conglomerate who came across. It was a complete bunch of nuffies who thought that they can take control of the board and, and do the massive spill. But you just persisted. And I've, I've been saying this for years and people are going to go, here goes Peps again. But you've got to get the off-field right. The on-field will almost – take care of itself. Strong clubs off field, strong club will come on field. Brendan Gale comes on, Piggy O'Neill joins. You've got Barmy in there. It's like the holy trinity have just made everything uh, their own. They've backed Dimmer to the hill. You know, I was just doing some some research before, and, and if you look, you know, Dimmer's going into his, I think it's his 11th season this year, or it could be even his 12th. You know, in the first eleventh, yeah, eleventh, yeah. In the first seven years, you had seventy-one wins. Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, incorrect. The first first seven years, you had eighty-four wins. In the last four, you've had seventy-one. Like it just goes to show that you went from a, you know, two thousand sixteen, you had eight and fourteen, and you went in two thousand seventeen, eighteen and seven. You completely flipped it on its head. Two thousand eighteen goes. Uh, 19 and 5, 2019, 19 and 6, and even last year, it was 15 and 5 with the grand final. It is just mind-boggling how it has completely flipped. And, you know, everybody is jealous of Richmond right now because you sit back and go, I cannot find I cannot find a weak spot at all with them. So hopefully you can shed some light about, you know, what are the concerns you might have? We'll talk about that later on, but... What has what's it like sitting back from a Richmond perspective when you've been you know goodness thirty five odd years no flags, you're pulling your teeth out. You, is it ever going to happen again? And suddenly it's just 
sprouting wins, sprouting premierships. And how how far could this this ride go, this journey go? What's it like? Tell us, you know, people like me who, who haven't been down that road. Look, it 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 is pretty awesome. Um, perhaps the the best bit about it is celebrating with all the all the mates who you did all the hard times with. Like on the night of the 2017 Premiership, we all went back to the same pub in Richmond that we went to after 2013, where we managed to lose the finals to the team that finished ninth. Like you know, you do, you just have this this shared history with these people over years and years and they understand the pain, they understand the humour and you, and you, get, to, you get to celebrate it with them and that, that's, that's the best bit about it. Um, I can also highly recommend just, just taking notes along the way, you know, when somebody says that you shouldn't trade for uh, Dion Prestier, you should go back to the draft uh, and rebuild or they say uh, that um, uh, they're a month away from saying that Gold Coast are closer to a premiership than uh, Richmond is, you know, you, you just take notes of those things and when Matthew Lloyd says something else, you, you just remember them. And so take notes along the way, celebrate it with your mates, you know, and don't take anything for granted because, you know, we, we've spent hours and hours, we've got, you know, probably 20 different episodes where um, my co-host Andy advocated for sacking uh, Dima. I was always a bit more on the fence, as I tend to do. Um, but Somebody has we to didn't be on see the fence. Coming. Yeah. We, we, we obsess about this stuff far too much and we didn't, we didn't see it coming. So it's that great, it's that great uncertainty of, of sport and why we love footy that, you know, sometimes it just happens and, you know, it certainly helps when you've got somebody like Dusty and he turns into Superman for three grand finals. But, yeah, mm. well, <laughs> we I didn't know, see it coming. I, know. I don't think anybody saw 2017 coming. 2018, well, we, 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 that was the one we, we saw coming and we know what happened. 2019. Yeah. Yep, that, that was there. And even last year, there was a stages where you're going, I don't think they're going to be able to claw their way back. And you were able I, to do it. I was then- pretty worried. I was pretty worried in the second quarter of the grand final when we'd had Nick Boston knocked out seven minutes into the game and Cats are 21 points up and looking all all over us. So, we've we've yeah, spoken a, about that. The, the, the grind Myers snap. If he'd only taken a normal <laughs> set shot, it could have been a completely different story. So what we've spoken about that many, many times on Lace Out, and it just goes to show that there can be those sliding doors with Gwyneth that can, you know, make the difference between <laughs> holding up the cup and, you know, crying into a box of tissues, which Geelong virtually did. They, they had you on toast. And if that had gone through, it may have been the difference between you guys going in, going, they've got us. Uh, and flipping it around to actually we're, we're still in this and it was option B and the story wrote itself. Let's take a moment just to absorb what happened in 2020. So yes, you were premiers. You did end up at the season uh, at the end of that particular season with a, um, a 13 and four record. You do go in and play prem. You go and play finals. You have uh, a percentage of 124, 8.89. Uh, so a magnificent scoring um potency you had Jaden short what an absolute magnificence uh super just is this an all awesome play and when, and when i was looking up all the best and fairest he was one of the ones that stood out because i thought you know could it have been a dusty or could it have been uh, a cochin or would it have been a hooli or someone just you know a big name but shorts just come come completely out and he's beaten dusty by three votes in that being if dusty comes second you mentioned the guy earlier mm. Austin comes fourth it's just you know, even from a trades perspective, you don't bring anyone in. Oleg Markov goes to Gold Coast. Jack Higgins goes off to St Kilda. With no malice for either of those players, it was almost a, a pat on the back, you know, thank you for your service, you know, and all the best for your career, which other clubs, <coughs> Collingwood, have a bit of an issue with over the years. And it seems to be when people leave, it's in bad taste. But this was, you know, all the best for your career. We'll do whatever we need to do to it. 
you know, even from a coach's perspective, like Lepich goes, Craig McRae goes to the Hawks, you do some internal shuffling to fill those voids. So from a Richmond perspective, there's not a lot going on from 2020 to 2021. You've just set yourself up perfectly where a lot of clubs are just, how can we change it? How can we change it? You just, okay, it's another season. As long as we've got the hunger, we know we've got the people. It's ours to lose, guys. It's it's mind-boggling how it's completely flipped for this club that would eat their own for so many years. Yeah, look, the, so the, Richmond has been good about letting, if guys have been getting senior games and they get a good enough offer from another club, you know, fill your boots. You know, Reese Conker gets a four-year contract offer from Fremantle, go for it. Brandon Ellis, $2 million from the Suns, go for it. Jack Higgins is actually the first one where he was under contract. And, yeah, the the club was very gracious about it in public, but I understand there was a bit of behind-the-scenes uh, angst uh, oh, on that of one. Of course they, you would, they, especially for all the stuff that but, he's gone through over that time and they've kept yeah, him on and then he really, does that. It's a bit- really popular kid, yeah. And Ken uh, Ken plays look great in preseason. He's be, he's but once I I don't understand why he would have left. Like he was he was getting a game. It wasn't as if he was in and out. Yeah, or I didn't get the ultimate success at the end of the year. But there've been so many things on his plate to leave that. Yeah, that was a that look, was he, a bit of a strange. But you know what? Wasn't even, on, yeah, Sorry. he wasn't even in the squad for the grand final. I think I think if you want a single reason why he left, uh, that's why. Like yeah. he. Jake Arts was an emergency for the for the forwards and maybe for the mids. Josh Caddy was ahead of him, so yeah. It's, look, there is the the clubs the clubs doing a lot of things right, but it's all the whole system is set up that dynasties are, are not forever, and so the clubs, you know, we haven't uh, brought anyone in um, from other clubs. Um, with any profile since 2017. It's been a draft and develop model, and that's fine, but we're now getting to the stage where we've got quite a few kids like Riley Collier-Dawkins, uh, Thompson Dow, Jack Ross. Like They've they've got to step up and prove themselves because father, father time waits for no man, and, you know, they're, they're going to have to rejuvenate the, the list to... to uh, staying competitive, the top four, because you know, the, yeah, we played we played Adelaide in a, a grand final in in 2017, and they're in a abject rebuild. We played the Giants in 2019; they missed the finals a year later. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. You're right. You just don't know what's going to happen. And if you you know have a bit of a look at your list breakdown, you've got. Uh, 12 players, 28 and plus, which isn't too bad. There are some with more, there's some with less. Okay, so it's it's not too bad. But if you have a look at the quality of those players, that's where maybe the concerning part is. If I went in order, as an example, Hooley, Edwards, Rewalt, Cochin, Asprey, Martin, Grimes, Lambert, Marlon Pickett, my my goodness, how many? 20 games and two and two flags. Like <laughs> um, Josh Caddy, uh, Dion Prestia, and then Tom Lynch. So that's your you're 28 and above bracket. Now I'm tipping every one of those is is virtually a walk up start into that 20 that 22 that run out every single week. So you you definitely are right. You've got a, a great group, but father time does catch up quite quickly. Mm. You might be able to squeeze it for another year or two, and then you're going to have to rejuvenate at the back end. The flip side to that is you've got 13 13 kids who have played 10 games or less. So you have still got a bit of that growth. But the difference between what's at the top and what's at the bottom, there's there's almost too much of a gap uh, in that middle range. So you're right, there, as, yeah. as they sort of tick That's over, the, you're going to have to start blooding these kids. If not, start pulling them pulling them from other areas as well too. It's, it, it is a challenge, yeah, but you so, know what? I'd rather be where you are now than clubs trying to find out the magic, you know, get the secret source formula because a lot of us haven't got it at the moment and you have. Just keep doing what you're doing. No, that we've we've talked about the you know Jack Jack Rewalt's um coming into his fifteenth uh, season like and realistically his success is not on the list at the moment we we haven't invested in a key position player uh, as a first round uh, pick uh, this decade so you know, 
But well, and in for people, a decade. Yeah, but if you're bringing in people like Lynch, you're bringing in your Prestia, Caddy, like you're bringing them in. So you, but I think it's smart the way that you've done it. You've used those you know, higher picks to to draw those players across rather than having to sit and, and build new forwards because it takes it takes three, four, five years for a, a good kid these days to become a, a great forward. It doesn't happen overnight like it used to because the game is so fast and the. Uh, they're spreading mm. the load. So if you can get we, three, three forwards who can do the job of one Jack Rewalt, you're in a better position. It's just, it's are just we talking about Sam Wiedemann now? Mm, nah, I'm talking about him. I'm the, like I went and watched a bit of the Melbourne Western Bulldogs game the other day and I saw Jamar, I can't pronounce his name, Jamar Hale. Yugo Hale, yeah. He, yeah, he's going to be, a, he's he's gonna bonkers. be good, but his body yeah. is not right. He's a couple of pre-seasons away even making a decent impact. So it's, yeah, the, uh, the King boys, I know that they're, they're quite, quite big and large, but are they dominating like we expected them to? They're doing all right. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's just taking a bit longer for these forwards because it's, because it's team defense. You're not just one-on-one. You've got two, three guys hitting you at the time and, and the, the, the smaller bodies just can't take that. So if you can bring somebody in, but you know what? I'm looking at Jack Rewalt going, geez, I'd love to have a Jack Rewalt on him. Gun player, but just absolutely gun team player. I could go through your list, mate. You're in a cracking, cracking position. How do you, how do you see 2021 from your perspective? Like, do you look at this and go, I don't know, do I see any concerns? Do I, am I worried about anything? Look, so um, who's, who's first ruck if Toby Nankervis gets injured? Oh, good point. You probably got Chol. Yeah, that's it. So that's yeah. It'd be maybe a Chol, or once he um, finishes Brian his Samson, suspension from being Soldo. an idiot. Um, yeah, Soldo's out till uh, oh, yes, maybe yes. the end of the year. If anything, he's mm-hmm. torn a ACL and PCL. Exactly Callum right. Common Jones has got another month to go on his suspension, and he's got one senior game. Um, maybe a Chol's. One of those, you know, he's a rookie now. Yeah, tantalising talents, but you know, never, never consistently put it together. So, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of depth there. So it's that, and I think depth depth is a bit of a problem. And I, you know, there's there's going to be injuries. The teams, it's a good problem to have. But they've played. 12 extra games over the, the last four years. And we've seen the last couple of years, we've had pretty heavy injuries through the middle of the year and they've been lucky enough to and good enough to get them all right for the finals. But, yeah, I think I think treating – and I think you'll see that them treat the season as a as a marathon. You know, the only year that we finished top was, was 2018. Um, but we finished top four the other – the other time, so you can clearly, um, I think you have to finish top four probably to have a really good crack at a flag. So how do you how do you manage? You know, it's starting to be an aging list. How do you manage them through the season? Give the younger guys a bit of a go, and then have the have the team in place for another crack at it. But you know, we've that the Port Adelaide final last year was was close. Could have gone either way. True. You know, Geelong, we've recruited really well. So, yeah. But, you- but once again, and I've said this as well with the Geelong guys, yeah, they've cr- recruited really well, but they're older guys as well. So they've only got a couple of years left before they oh. fall off the edge of the cliff, probably a lot harder than you will. Yeah. So- oh, look, that some of those Geelong teams towards the end of last year were the oldest teams an AFL team has ever put out on, on the field. Like, yeah. And and they Maybe. just recruited and they just went out and recruited more. Mm. So they are literally yeah. turning into dad's army out there. But you know what? If if they can just take it one step further than they did last year, hey, so be it. You've, if you've got all the eggs in one basket, I think Scotty's gone. All the eggs are in one basket. We go to ha- we're going to have to do it as well too. Hey, listen. Yeah. What can you tell me? Do you know what anything about your two draft picks that you picked up? Samson Ryan at forty, and oh, well, you've come- Morris Rioli you've, you've- Junior at fifty one. You, you've come. You've come to the right place. So on on our show, um, I normally do the the draft uh, deep dives. Yep. So um, actually, one of my one of my favourite 
ones you'll appreciate. So um, Clayton Oliver um, was a sort of going along maybe late first round prospect a few years ago, plays a few games in the Richmond VFL and we just saw him and thought, he is a gun. He yep. was starting in the middle, dominating, and the, you know, and he becomes a top five uh, draft pick. So, you know, that's how these things happen. But um, uh, Samson Ryan, he's two hundred and six centimeters, um, twenty year old. He was in the Lions Academy, and they didn't pick him up. Um, and I can kind of see why he's really skinny um, still, but he's got a fair bit of talent and. He's actually not that far from a from a senior game, given with Soldo's injury and Callum Coleman Jones's suspension. But he sort of makes Tim English um, look pretty muscly, which is which is a bit of a worry. And yeah, Mor- Morris Rioli Jr. Like it's a it's a really big name. Um, he's a kid from Darwin, um, Tiwi Islands, uh, and he, he's you know he. You hate to say he's got that stereotypical uh, talent, but he's yep. but he tackles uh, like a monster. He's quick in short burst, can kick a goal from nowhere. Probably got to work on his fitness, but yeah, the, I think I think sort of balance. He'll he'll have some fantastic highlights in the VFL this year, but maybe maybe a year or two away from from getting the uh, the type of fitness. Like I think. The, the name's probably bigger than the game just at, just at this stage. Yeah, but there's been a few of them like that, like even Dacos from Collingwood was a little bit like that for his first couple of seasons, and now he's grown to become his own player as well. Buse from the mm. Cats, same sort of thing too. They're growing into their own legacy, which is what we want to see. It's interesting that you mentioned about Ryan Sampson because he's pushing 96 kegs, and if, if you put him up against um, Ivan Soldo, who's two centimetres less, but he's got 10 kilos on him, and you mentioned about – Tim English, uh, he was going up against Max Gorn on the weekend and just got a bit of a push and shove virtually out of context. But then when you put the bigger body, Stefan Martin, against the big fella in Gorn, you could just see that it was virtually um, uh, negating each other. So it's all about the hype, but you're right. He needs to he needs to get a couple of pre-seasons under him. But, hey, look, you know, these days, just run him on the, you know, two, 206 centimetres. He's, he's almost a um, he's almost an on-baller at that stage now. It's a, you know, when you got Patrick Cripps at 194, 195 centimetres being an on-baller, these days, as long as they can run, they can virtually play mm. anywhere. So it's 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 exciting to see that, you know, that sort of progression grow. And, and like you said, if he's one of those ones that's going to stand out, you think, well, you never know, they might throw him in against a, a lowly side throughout the year just to give him a crack and give him a bit of a taste and say, listen, you know, in a couple of years, this spot's yours if you want it. You put in the hard work, we'll, we'll back you to the tilt. Hey, can I ask you a question? What is it like having Dusty in your team? Like just for all us, for all us sitting here, and look, I didn't want to bring it up because there's so many other players that we could talk about, right? But Dusty's Dusty. Like you sit there and you watch him, and by the end of that grand final last year, you were just shaking your head going, he's just done it again. He's going to win another norm. He's got three. What's it like just knowing that, if 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 in 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 case of emergency break dusty, just what's it, just tell us tell us tell the rest of the seventeen clubs out there what it's like to know that he, he's there just to to just dominate when he needs to. Oh, it's about as much fun as you'd expect. <laughs> like that, we've you know we're we're at the point where you know supporters uh, are my age. Like it, it's clear he's the. Um, the best, the best player we've ever seen, and you know, he. It's hard. You know, it's impossible to compare him to somebody like uh, Jack Dyer, or even Kevin Bartlett, or or Royce Hart. But you know, three Norm Smiths. How do you um, like he? How he steps up on the the big stage? Like, honestly, don't think he'll win another Brownlow because I just don't know that. Um, it's you know the regular season's quite. Interesting well, enough for him. Well, is he is he a victim of his own success? Like a, a, a bad dusty game, you know, thirty kick four is a ba- is a lowly game compared to if it was you know no name brand uh, does the same thing three votes automatically. Is he just because he's so good that it's just expected? It, 
and an average game by him, which is a quality game by anyone else, just sort of gets forgotten. Oh, totally. We'll we'll do uh, shows on our podcast, and we'll get to Dusty at about the twenty five minute mark after we've finished talking about um, you know Thompson Dow's debut or um, Liam Baker out of the back pocket. Um, so yeah, it's it's easy to his good games. It's just easy to take them for granted. But those the way he's been able to step up in in big finals has has just been in, incredible. Um, and uh, look, I, I we even wonder if can, you know can Dusty even keep being Dusty? Like he's just been so incredible uh, in how accurately he's shot for goal, how much he's yeah, been able to turn a game at a big moment and. You know, it seems impossible that even he can keep at that standard. So you just look, you just you just enjoy every moment because you you never know um, how long it's going to last. And you know, when and we when we sort of saw it coming, but not not like this. Like not he he was a very good player in in twenty sixteen, but there was a lot of um, cheap kicks on the half back line. There wasn't there wasn't just this taking over the game and dominating that we've seen since. Oh, he's just grown into something extraordinary. And you have a look at it. He's run, like he's played a minimum of 20 games in every season that he's been in the AFL. And there's not many players that get to play 20 games full stop. But to do that, that just either shows that he's built like a freak, he just takes great care of his body, or, well, he's not getting impacted that much because no one can get near him. It's it's extra, it's just extraordinary to look at that. Like the lowest amount of games he's played for a year is twenty. Like, yeah, he doesn't suffer from doesn't get injuries. He doesn't. Maybe everybody needs tattoos because there's something in the tattoo wink that just keeps him, you know, together. If so, I'm going out to get a couple of sleeves tomorrow. M- Might have given me ten years. Look, the between between the the tattoos and you know the the fairly infamous trips to Vegas with. Swanee. Well, I think it probably obscured the fact that he's extremely professional off field by by all reports. He's um, he's done a lot to get his body right. He's done a lot to get his mind right through uh, with the help of Emma Murray and others. And he's he's got himself in a really good space uh, to be successful with his footy. Like he, you know, there were there were some tough times on the way. You know, this. Ralph Carr touring him around uh, oh, GWS, GW, GWS, oh, oh, and all out of he just looked, he just looked miserable the, the the whole time, and you know he get he came close to to taking the contract offer from North in in 2017. Like well, I offered him silly money then. Do you reckon? Do you reckon it was the the chopsticks uh, saga that really turned his career around? Look, I think. Uh, it was a bit of a, a wake-up call in some respects, but it's also, I think it's partly why, it's a little bit uh, blind, despite yeah, having a manager too, who's, yeah. well, his, his manager is, uh, you know, sort of notorious for, for trying to get every dollar he can and fair go to him, but um, I think that the loyalty the club showed to him and particularly Peggy O'Neill, I yeah. think uh, he's a very loyal guy, Dusty, by all reports, and yeah. That's that was sort of part of the forging of of the bonds, and you know I think I also think he would have been miserable at North Melbourne having to be the face of the game, which you know is reasonable enough for a guy who'd be earning one point three to one point five million a year. But at Richmond, you know Trent Cochin's the the captain. Jack Rewalt does a lot of media interviews, and Dusty does the occasional promo. Like it just. Just it suits him to the ground. It's it's as interesting that you say that because when I spoke to the the um, guys over in Fremantle, it was a similar sort of situation being the face of the club when Jesse Hogan went over there. And I asked the same sort of question, which you know, well, why has it worked for for Richmond? Why didn't it work? What what happened? And he pretty much said that he was almost a loner at the club, like he didn't have mates at the club, um, did his rehab by himself, and and just almost didn't fit into the environment. And so going over to the GWS, he just had to sort of get out of that sort of Perth space and, and hopefully it's a, it's a completely different situation for him because I love him as a player. But it just seems to be that it's just the environment that just threw their arms around him and said, mate, 
we'll, we'll accept you for who you are. Just we just want you to be who you are. And yeah, you're right. The Cochin family. He's been with the Cochins for for goodness knows how long, and he's almost another brother to him. And it's just made him feel that just probably the love that he's got because his dad's still over in New Zealand at the moment, so he can't actually. You know, relate to him um, from a close basis. So, to have him as a mentor and just to keep him on—I wouldn't say the straight and narrow, but just to be there for him—and he seems to be just a, a quite a humble bloke who just plays his football and, and and loves playing with his teammates and loves playing at the club. It's just a—it's just a perfect scenario. And you know, congratulations for for Richmond to set that up. I've got to ask you something as well too about your team. Every team, you know, you have to kick a good score to to win grand finals. But one thing about Richmond, your defence has been stellar. What, what what can you see, or what do you know about the the bond that back six have that just consistently, you know, when you watch them, it's almost they'll, they'll play off their man. They they're set up so well, they're so well drilled. What is it about them, or what do you know that just has it in a way that n- no other team in my eyes at the moment can compete with the way that your back line work every single week. Look, uh, if you ask Richmond supporters their favourite players, like, I mean, everyone uh, will say Dusty pretty quickly, but the, there's a lot of love for the for the defenders. Like Dylan Dylan Grimes is the one that everyone would want their, their daughter to marry. Nick Vostens, um, uh, long touted as future captain of the club. Well, either um, of those two could be yeah. future captains for the club. Yeah, Grimes, Grimes is pushing thirty, so you know, maybe maybe you go a generation down. But yeah, fair it's a like it's both it's both a good structure and some very talented players. And that um, what I was saying before about round pegs and round holes that that defence um, and I think Justin Lepich deserves a ton of credit for this. Um, starting in particularly in twenty seventeen, um, they really had a had a really strong. Um, defensive structure, even even someone like Nathan Broad, who's you know occasionally a bit shaky one on one, but he's really versatile. Like he's he's quick, he covers a lot of ground, and it, and it's not a mismatch when he's matched up virtually on anyone. Like Dangerfield's never caused a lot of da- damage when he goes forward against us because we can match him up with somebody who's six foot four and quick and we've got several of them. So it's a it's a really versatile defense along with the smaller guys, Baker, Short, Pooley, oh. all of all of which can uh, uh, really good users of the ball. So yeah, but the structure fits really well. Yeah. I no, would, and and you were saying it's, about- it's like it, it, when I talk about structure, you, you've got a player like Alex Rance goes down with his knee. You bring in a guy <laughs> Noah Bolter, and it, it just almost like where's this? Not where's this guy come from, but he just slotted in perfectly. Like you'd think that, and I remember when, when, um, when he went down that first game of the year, Rance. Like the season's over, Richmond are done. It's all cooked. Don't worry about it. And Bolter comes in uh, a year later and starts to earn his stripes. Last year he was. Behind Andrews and May, he's probably one of the the other uh, full back, which was in all Australian contention. He was sensational for you guys. So he, you're right. He was a- very good. I, he was he was put he was really put in a position to succeed. Like all all he had to do was focus on his man. Or he he just had to do the the one on one match up on the on the biggest guy on the other team. Yep. And Dylan Grimes would do his best to come over and give him a hand. So that. Sort of the difference between him and someone like Rance or um, you know Stephen May, yep. May for your your mob. Like the, he doesn't he doesn't read the the play and when to leave his man and such yet. But they put him in a position where he just has to do one simple job, and he's a great athlete, and he's uh, made a really good fist of it. But yeah, to, they put him in a position to succeed. Oh, no, but, but that's the thing, and that's what I love about it is like, mate, all you have to do is just stop your man. We'll, 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 we'll do everything else. You just stop your – at the moment, you've got one job. Just stop your man. That's all we're asking. And he did that and did it exceptionally well. So, like I said, it's just – it's the old, you know, if, if, if one piece of the engine breaks down, we just put in a new part and we just keep on moving along those lines. So, it's awesome. All right. Let's have a look at 2021. Okay. So, we're moving forward. You've won uh, three out of the last four – 
Brendan Gale's um, you know, psychic abilities have all come true. 100,000 <laughs> members, you know, three flags before the end of 2020. Moving into 2021, where, where do you see uh, – do you see actually any more improvement to come out of this group? Oh, it's a bit much to ask for more improvement. Jeez. Yeah. Um, look, the, I, I think – a fair, a fair bit would have to go right, but they can they can maintain uh, this standard. Like they've, yeah, father father time's coming. Like it's it's certainly Basha Hooley's last year, possibly Jack Rewalk's last year. Maybe Shane Edwards has got a got a couple more. So you know, do they can they keep the twenty two out on the park? Can the young players step up? Like I think I think improvements a bit much, but yeah, I think. I think it, they can stay at this level. It's going to be it's going to be tough. There's some there's some really good teams coming for them. You know, Port Adelaide are going to be super hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've they've recruited Ali Relier and Fantasia, the you know, Geelong with Cameron and Higgins and Smith. Um, yeah, I think I think you know Brisbane maybe, but uh, I think, it's I think okay to say. Next. When, Next run, when you're when you're down. on the top of the food chain, mate. When you're when you're on the top of the Christmas tree, you can actually say, "Look, we don't really have to improve. We just need to maintain." I think that you can you can say that. Like any other mm. club, they can't. You guys can. Say, we just have to maintain because one of the good things about it, your draw is the sixth hard, hardest in the league according to Champion Data. Mm. Uh, you only played Geelong. You played Geelong twice, Brisbane twice, St Kilda twice, GWS and Hawthorne twice. So the only two that I'd see being any challenge to you would be Geelong and Brisbane, just from the simple travel factor. St Kilda, I think you got them covered, and the other two I wouldn't worry about. Yeah, but we don't. We don't like playing on that little um, uh, GWS uh, grounds. Pretty similar to Cadenia Park, which I also hate. Now, oh, how oh. small forwards don't go. Don't go too well on the uh, on the really uh, small uh, narrow grounds yep. uh, so much. So yeah, don't we we've struggled up in Sydney against the the Giants. But yeah, look, it's a it's a tricky draw. But it's totally understandable. Totally understandable. you expect? Yeah, well, it's totally understandable when you play. You know, sixteen of your last uh, sixteen games at the MCG. <laughs> like that, it's you, you go. You are going to get used to the ground. Um, so I was going to ask you about the concern, but I think you've just mentioned it there, which is all about father time. It's going to be about mm. will the cl- how long can we contain this? If you do win it this year, which gives you that three, Pete, if you had to put yourselves up, and you know, I'm probably being a little bit biased here, if you had to put yourself up against the Hawthorne of uh, 208, 13, 14, 15, where, 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 do you, where would you put that? Would you put it as a... An equal, a better. It's, Where would you? It's 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 a it's tough. It's hard one. to say. You're still one behind, but was, yeah. Well, four four in five is pretty good. Like it's it's Melbourne in the nineteen fifties territory. I take um, one in sixty four. So, <laughs> I take one in sixty four. Yeah. I take one in sixty seven. Like I'm not being greedy. I'll just take one. But no, nah, yeah. but they're the sort of things that you can think about. Like you've already got a. a if you're winning three out of four, it's a bit of a dynasty. Four, then you're getting iconic. Like that's something that yeah. gets – Yeah, I think that's iconic. And, yeah, there's not many teams that – Geelong weren't able to do it. Uh, Brisbane only got the three. I only got the three. <laughs> you can get the fourth. It really does set you apart because that's you, Collingwood, and um, Hawthorne, which in my eyes – and Melbourne going back a while ago. But they're, they're the four that would really stand out. Um so who's the breakout player? Who's the one that you're looking at the moment? Now, they may have played already uh, and you're really expecting to take that next step or is there someone that you can see floating in the wings that you're getting like, this is this guy's not floating under the radar, but us as Richmond supporters, we know that this guy's going to be something by the end of the season. Look, the, the one who I'd love to make it is uh, Riley Collie dawkins he's, he's been in emergency, I think it's eight times without without Dave Boone. He's a former, former first-round player Draft pick, 191 centimetre midfielder, big body. Like, you know, there's some big hype on him, but you know, we just haven't seen it yet. So I'd love, I'd love for him to make it. And look, the the other one, look, he's already finished top ten in the uh, best and fairest. But Shai Bolton's just got oh. um, enormous talent. Like, 
Yeah. Hasn't he had a like, – yeah. There, there's like him, Castagna. They, they were the two when I looked and went how many how many grand finals that they've had and how many they've won. It's like I didn't pick either of them, but I reckon Castagna has sort of grown. But Bolton's last twelve months were absolutely phenomenal in my eyes. He has gone from a player who looked a bit flashy, but he his consistency was week in week out in 2020. So I really oh, like him if you could continue that as well. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. Um, so he was in he was in midfield most of the last last season, yep. particularly with Preston injured, but was back in the forward line for the finals and uh, uh, Shea kicked uh, a couple of goals against St Kilda when it was when it was close and and tough and they were just unbelievable. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to see what's next for him. I think we all would too, but the one thing that also we want to find out is who's going to be the breakdown. Now, you mentioned Basher Hooley already. Who else do you think at the, this might be their last year in the yellow and black for um, for the Richmond Football Club when 2021 finishes up? Ooh, midway through last year, I would have put money on it being Jack's last year, but he actually looks, he looks pretty frisky in pre-season, so... Maybe don't stick a, a fork in him yet. Um, yeah, look, I, th- I think Shane Edwards will get a bit more out of. Yeah, I don't. You know, it might be it might be someone unexpected like uh, Cochin loses the hunger for it. But yeah, it's. Well, I think I think this year's all right. I think a couple of years time, there's going to be there's going to be some really um, big name guys getting getting chaired off the ground in their farewell. It, it, let's just say, you know, perfect storm, you win it this year. Could you see Jack and Cochin both saying, you know what, I'd go out. Koch, and also, sorry, Basher Hooley as well saying, you know what, that's enough. I, w- 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 th- there's, no, there's no point going again because, you know, this is just the perfect, perfect thing. Jack would have played his 300th game hopefully by then. Cochin would be a four-time premiership captain. Basher Hooley, four-time premiership player, m- robbed. Robbed, I'll say, of a Norm Smith. Um, do you reckon that the three of them might potentially just say, mm. you know what? Or do you reckon it's too much for the club to to lose that much experience in one big hit? Look, I think I think Hawley, Hawley's got a series of calf injuries, which are the, the classic old man yep. injuries. Look, the the one thing against uh, coach and uh, calling stumps is that um, uh, he. He and his wife love a love a cashy uh, more than life itself. So, um, and when they, you know, the, the the story goes that when Luke Luke Hodge saw the contract offer from Fox Footy, um, that's when he decided to have another go round with the uh, the Lions. So, yeah, the you also have to, you know, in cold realistic terms, that these guys are on are on really good pay packets, and it's. Um, any, uh, anything else is, is probably going to be a big step down for them. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. it's only a certain um, amount of day spas that you can promote to make up the amount of money of a trade and cultured contract. So, yeah, I, and, and I'm tipping, I'm tipping, um, I'm tipping the wife would be going, look, uh, just look, Trent, I don't care if you play three games, just stay. Just, just, we need you to stay, okay? Because, yeah. um, yeah, we've got, we've got things to take care of. Um, all right. So, if, if we had to, if we had to just, you know, put, Put uh, grab the Uji board and 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 the and the cards to try and figure out where Richmond are going to finish this year. Look, is it a, is it a um, formality that they're just going to run out premiership premiers again this oh, year, no, or where geez, do, where no. do you from your perspective? No, look, we're going to be or from your perspective, where do you where do you look at it? Like from a realistic perspective, from a Richmond's pers- Richmond's supporters' perspective, where do you see the oh. club ending up at the end of twenty twenty one? Look, it'd be it'd be really disappointing if they didn't put themselves in a position to have a have a crack at it. Like outside the top four would be be pretty disappointing. Not making a preliminary final, yeah. They'd, but oh, it's so much so much has to go right. Like we've had, yeah, you know, we've been lucky for all three years. We've had almost you know a handful of injuries across the three. Grand finals to to key players, and you know, can that last forever? Look, you hope it. 
you hope it does, but you know, you know it can't. So oh, look, we're 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 happy and smug, and we want more, but we're not taking anything for granted. Yep. So we're going. We're going. We're, we're cautionally calling so yes. a top four to a grand. So just, just yes. <laughs> it's got to be at least. It's got to be at least a top four. Um, it's funny. At one stage, you were going ninth every year. Look, we just want to play finals. We just want to play finals. Just to, like, we uh, just wanted to win a final. We just wanted yeah. to win a final. Now it's like, mm, nah, don't worry about that. We either have to make the the preliminary final weekend, or just it'll be just grand final or bust. Like that's what it is now. I know. Now, if it's not going to be you guys, now this is where I've I've been pushing it to to everyone that I've spoken to during these uh, season previews is to is to put the agates on the chopping board because this is where it's like you know what I've got to take myself out of this and this is where I put my expertise. If it's not going to be you this year, who do you think is going to be the twenty twenty one premiers? If it's not going to be Richmond. Look, just maybe I'm biased because they gave us such a hard game over in the Adelaide Oval. But yeah, Port Port were really good last year. Now maybe they maybe I they had a pretty dream draw, not having to leave South Australia for f- three months. But yeah, don't you start about re- dream draws? They didn't well. have to leave their oval for for three months. You didn't have to leave your oval for three months a couple of years ago. Just lovely, don't don't lovely. forget that one, Nick. <laughs> lovely, lovely oval that it is. Although yeah, I'm, beautiful I'm genuinely traumatised that about um, I've never been a reserve seat member because yep. you know, MCG just walk up, get a seat, no problem. But yeah, that's until they go back to more than fifty percent capacity. Yeah, it actually, could be a problem. Uh, it won't be for us Melbourne supporters, mate. We, we, we're going to be at ten percent capacity. We'd still have plenty of room to sit down. Uh, all right. So Port Adelaide, that's who we're saying. Um, Brownlow medalist. Do you have someone in mind who could take uh, Charlie home by the end of the year? Who sort of caught your eye so far? Uh, I like I like Bond. I'd, lo- I'd love Bond. It, it, ever since he's had that haircut. He's just looking good. It's amazing. Like him, yeah. Dyson Heppel, they've cut away the longness and they're just looking sharp at the moment. But he was magnificent. If he can do what he did on the weekend, uh, kicking three and having an absolute bag, he's definitely going to stand out. And, and it might be it might be his year because the doggies, she's their midfield is oh, it's dangerous. They've got a bit of a bit of an issue Look, forward and a bit of an issue down back, but that midfield. It's a, it's a great deep, midfield, but deep. I think I think people worrying that tr- someone like Trelaw uh, or McRae um, are going to take votes away from Bond. Right, uh, he's he's a star. Mm. The other the others a bit more working like very good players, but he he's he's got that X factor. I love every, watching him. Every every club needs to have. Uh, the, the guys who are in and under, and there's the guys who are on the outside. You, you have to, and look, both of us being uh, former footballers, we were the in and under guys, not the flashy stuff. We just did the hard yards. We made the other guys look good. Um, somebody has to be like that, and um, you know, otherwise, and then you have the bond on the outside, just taking it off. And but he can, mar- he's, he's a great mark. He's got a, as Bruce would say, a long leg. He does, he can kick a goal from outside fifty, and pushing over 190 centimeters again. He definitely stands out. So his name's come up a couple of times already. So I think we might have to get a bit of a multi going towards um, all these tips that are coming <laughs> out. All right. Um, a Col- I've asked about the Coleman, but that's been a bit of an interesting one because people are like, well, it's sort of because a lot of – there's no one really kicking bags anymore. But if you had to pick someone for a Coleman, would you – who do you think is going to be the standout full forward this year? So I struggled with this one. So I cheated and looked up the betting odds and it actually – Sportsbet had uh, Tom Lynch as the favourite. Oh, I don't, I don't quite see it. Like Jack Rewalt won our um, goal kicking last, last year. year. Yep. Yeah, so Lynch, Lynch when he wasn't being Hannibal Lecter, um, was <laughs> yeah he was good but not great. So yeah, I think I think maybe Hawkins, but does does Cameron take some goals away from him? So. I don't know. It's really uh, tough. Well, when I spoke to Cat Attack, they thought they'd work in tandem nicely. Uh, Hawkins down forward, and then Hawkins got a good rabbit tank. Cameron can go down there, so he doesn't think that they'll be spending too much time side by side. They'll just they'll just rotate that through. So he thought that's pretty good. But uh, the one that's come up a couple of times has been Joe Danaher. If you can get it right, um, you, you just you just never never know. So 
All right, here we go. I've got some quick hands for you, Nick. You ready for this? Okay, yeah. J- Richmond. Now these you don't know these questions because I've I've pulled these ones specifically for yourself. Okay, which one was Bestie's Bestie's? What was Dusty's best grand final performance out of the three Norm Smiths he won? Oh, 2020. 2020. Awesome. Yeah. Just le- just leaving the 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 final image of him snapping his fourth goal with Dangerfield sprayed out behind him. It's just just iconic. Yeah, the worst thing, yeah, the funny not worst thing, but the worst thing about that last goal is is that as you saw what was happening, you're going, if he has a shot, he's gonna kick this. If it was anyone else, you probably gone, Oh, good luck. But it was just like, he'll kick this. And he did. And we all just, just stood up and just went, this guy is an absolute marvel. If you could only pick one of them at their prime, who would you take, Richo or Rewalt? Richo. We've, we've done – we actually uh, – this was a, a pub discussion we had about um, 12 months ago, which, which got pretty heated. But Richo oh, – um, like I you know, grew up with Richo and he played with all his heart and he was, he was a Richmond supporter as his kid and his dad played for the club – and you know he just and he he played in such dreadful teams like oh but you know what just awful you know it wasn't just his football prowess which was amazing he could give the best sprays uh, that's oh, he could when my kids when my kids crack it I, they do a richo I actually call them kids you're doing a richo right now and I had to show them footage of it and they went yeah you're right dad it was amazing and that <laughs> year that and that year that he should have won the Brownlow on the wing my Goodness gracious! Could you imagine if that one came home? Like that's that's the sort of thing that the characters of the games aren't there anymore. So yeah, I'd I'd, I'd go Richo, but geez, if someone said, okay, well, we'll take Richo, you can have Rewalt, you'd be happy with that one as well too. You'd be um, you'd be happy with it as well. He he did particularly when he was younger. Jack Jack could give a, a spray as well. He could both give a spray too, definitely. Both both did teammates and to umpires like he's. He's not got very many 50-50 free kicks for a long time. Because <laughs> um, not, not if you give it a lip, I reckon. Not his way. Now, if um, Noah Bolter's there right now, if Alex Rance came back and said, you know what, I'm fully fit and I want to play, but you can only take one, would you take Rance or would you take Bolter? Ooh. Oh, you'd have to have Rance because, you know, he's the former All-Australian captain. Mm best key defender uh, we've ever seen in, in Richmond. But oh, for the for the next five years, it'd have to be have to be Bolter. He's a he's an extraordinary athlete. I like the way you put that one for the next five years. And if you could take anyone from any team right now and slot them into the Richmond team for 2021, who would it be? Oh, this is an easy one because he was a, a Richmond supporter as a as a kid, and I deeply love uh, Toby Nankervis, but uh, big Maxi Gorn. Oh, Ooh, he'd look no, good. you can't. No, no, no. Anyone else can't take Maxi. He, he's grown. Ooh. Like if, he, he, you know, when you, you know when a player plays one game and you, it's also almost their breakout game. He had his one, I think, in two, 2015 against Geelong. If you ever see that game where we beat them down there, he was sensational, and he just went nuts from there on. So I can, I could definitely tell you because. He's just – he's a he's around the groundwork. He's, I just love it. I just – you know, he's one of the players I go to watch because I just know what his output is as well too. Now, one of the other things before we before we uh, wrap up this bad boy was some of the umpiring things that you wanted to have a quick chat about was um, thoughts on umpiring and the rule changes, et cetera. But did you want to quickly mention what you were going to well, ask Well, yeah, because I, I do a bit of uh, field umpiring. I, I'm, I actually – I was watching the games on the weekend and I thought, Actually, this standing the mark thing is pretty simple to umpire. I can hate what they've done. Holding the ball is now like an eight-step process to work out. Is there a prior opportunity? Has he tried to dispose of the ball? Um, did he dispose of it directly? Blah, blah, blah. And you, you're trying to do that um, yep. with guys yelling at you in the moment and the ball pinging around. Like it's, it's impossible. But in it, nominating a ruckman, it's pretty easy. Two big dudes put their hands up. Good to go. Um, standing in the mark, you say, point to them, you say, stand, play on when the, the other guy moves. It's actually pretty simple. So we'll, we'll see if the, the problem with these things is they bring in these new rules and you just, you just don't know. It takes a while for the feel for the game to develop. Yep. And so 
Normally, normally by the final series, they get it right because they're the they're the most experienced umpires. Oh yeah, so. the Rolls Royces are yeah. the, the, the fish, and it, the game goes up a step, but the officiating seems to go back a step where they don't actually pay it; they just let the, the game go, which is which is what we want. But when you do a bit of that uh, officiating, the whole dropping the ball, I think if you asked anybody, what would be the one rule that just does their mind in? I think they actually got it right last year, and then they totally dialed it back the other way. And I don't know why they did yeah. that because it was if you got just, caught, that was it, too bad. And then they went, oh, that's too hard. I've seen some of the yeah, some of the practice games this year where they haven't even made contact and they've gone play on because they made an attempt. Well, no, you, you didn't kick it. You didn't handball it. You've dropped it. If you make an attempt and get caught and you don't dispose of it correctly, it, it should be dropping the ball or holding the ball or whatever you want to call it. But they seem to make that one – more difficult, and then they make these other ones, which are quite simple. And you look at it, and I was a big, I don't want it. I don't think it's, I, I can't stand it. And then I've watched a few games, and it has opened up the game as well too. I still think though, if a man's having a shot, you shouldn't have to just stand there with your hands up. You should be allowed to try and put him off. But you know, otherwise they can just kick straight over your head, and it's almost a guide for them. Hey, we'll see how things pan out. But I know one thing that's going to pan out positively throughout the year is the Tiger Talk podcast. So, Nick, tell us, tell the listeners who have been listening to this, they're going, this guy knows his stuff. I want more of it. When are you on? How often? Who's with you? And where can they find you as well? So we're Richmond Tiger Talk uh, on Twitter, all the all the main podcast uh, platforms were hosted on uh, uh, richo.podbean.com. Uh, but, yeah, just... <laughs> Uh, looks up on on Twitter, send us a, a message, and yeah, Andy, Andy, and I'd love to hear from you because yep. uh, look, my, what it, what is better than um, sharing sharing the current Richmond team? And you know mates? what? We're going to put all of those links up on the episode notes for you as well too. So, team, get on the if you, if you're a Richmond supporter and you want to know the real what the real thoughts are besides your own. Richmond Tiger Talk is the one to get on to. And the man, Nick, he is an absolute champ too. But well, there's one last thing that we need to do before we wrap this bad boy up, Nick, and it's simply this. I know Richmond is successful. I know that you love going and watching our great game. But they simply have to ask you this. Nick from Tiger Talk, how do you want your footy? Oh, lace out, Pips. I think everybody wants their footy lace out. Listeners, that is your Richmond 2021 preview. I think you're in for another good year. So fingers crossed you'll be holding up that silverware live at the MCG this year. Thanks for listening to our latest episode. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes. I'm your host, Chris Pepper, and with Jamie Wallace, we give you your footy how you want it. Lace out.